Greetings, my friends. Can your heart stand to know the shocking true facts of the man who directed the worst film of all time? The movie Plan 9 from Outer Space, directed by Edward D. Wood, Jr. The movie about the movie and the man who made it, Ed Wood, directed by Tim Burton. Is Plan 9 really the worst movie of all time? Ah, uh, probably not. I'll talk about that in the extras. But Plan 9 is definitively bad. Bad in a way that only the finest bad films can be bad, like Sharknado, Birdemic, The Room. It's inadvertently hilarious. Probably best enjoyed in a group, a raucous group. Possibly an inebriated raucous group. Plan 9 delivers a durable combination of florid, ludicrously repetitive writing, wooden performances, laughable, flimsy sets, cheaply made shiny alien costumes, wobbly flying saucers, cheesy effects, continuity howlers, and this. Unique among all candidates for worst film of all time, Plan 9 features a top-billed star who is dead, actually dead, before the film even went into production. And yet, despite all its flaws, Plan 9 bursts with an energy and drive to tell its story that keeps viewers coming back. It's an achievement that has fascinated movie buffs and film students for decades. Two of those students who met at USC Film School thought, eh, maybe there's a film in the story of the man who made Plan 9. Flash forward, Scott Alexander and Larry Karajewski successfully pitch their idea to producer Denise DeNovi. They get their story and script made with Tim Burton directing Johnny Depp in the title role. What makes Ed Wood work as a film is that everyone, the writers, director, and actors, all of them, come to the project with tremendous affection and admiration for Wood and for his mad quest to make movies. Ed Wood lived and worked at the edges of the film industry, attracting a diverse crew of misfits who counted on him to put them in pictures. There are two key emotional pivots in Burton's film. First, the touching relationship that Ed Wood formed with an aging, impoverished, morphine-addicted Bella Lugosi. Martin Landau won an Oscar for playing Lugosi. So did Rick Baker and team for the makeup that turned Landau into Lugosi. Landau finds dignity and emotional truth in this proud, bewildered, terribly disappointed, lonely actor. He started his career in Hollywood at the top as Dracula in 1931, ended up making movies for Ed Wood. The second emotional pivot is the challenge Ed Wood faced as a transvestite in 1950s Hollywood. The man loved women, but he also loved the feel of Angora on his body. A man in women's clothing is something Hollywood has treated as a surefire laugh since the 1920s. But Burton and Depp don't play for cheap laughs. Occasional humor, yes, but never mockery. They don't play it for pity, either. It's just completely matter-of-fact. Sometimes Ed wears a dress. Deal with it. Johnny Depp's performance here is, I think, one of the best and bravest of his career. He finds just the perfect tone for the resourceful, optimistic, but ultimately clueless Ed Wood. He said in an interview he modeled his unflappable, cheerful delivery on Ronald Reagan and Casey Kasem. As a character portrait, Edward D. Wood Jr. is right at home in Tim Burton's Gallery of Misfits, but in visual style, doesn't feel like a Burton film. He treats this film with a very straightforward, flat, black-and-white 50s look. It's almost a film that Ed Wood might have made if he had had more talent, an adequate budget, a top-ranked cinematographer, and a cast that knew how to act. Burton holds back on his trademarked visual flourishes except in one sequence, when Ed takes his girlfriend on a spook house carnival ride. Burton and his production designer Tom Duffield pull out the stops, and for one brief sequence, we know we're in a Tim Burton movie. Bill Murray is spacey and canned as transgender pal Bunny Breckenridge. Sarah Jessica Parker and Patricia Arquette play the two women in Ed's life. Jeffrey Jones is the preposterous TV psychic Criswell and Bobby Slayton. Bobby Slayton appears too briefly as a TV comedian. I know Bobby. I can never get enough Bobby Slayton in movies. Howard Shore, who scored all of Peter Jackson's Tolkien epics, composed a very witty homage to 1950s horror themes, complete with bongos and theremin. Sadly, Ed Wood was not a hit. Didn't make its money back. Maybe it's just a subject that wasn't well-known enough, too insidery, maybe because it's black and white. Who wants to see a black and white film about an obscure director of a handful of cult classics? For that matter, who wants to see me review it? If you know anyone who might, please send them this way. Seriously. This series of Movies About Movies is also not a hit. I'm enjoying it. I think you're enjoying it. I love your comments. But a lot of my regulars aren't showing up. I think they'd rather hear me talk about YouTube culture and YouTubers. I'm thinking I need to recruit some new viewers who are movie lovers. Maybe you can help me with that. If you know any hardcore movie fans, please send them this way. Email, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, anything you got. I'm not asking you for Patreon money. I'm just asking you to send me views. Help me keep this series going. We'll vlog for views. To help you help me, I made a promotional video you can send out to your friends. It's in the description. Find a link that makes it easy to tweet it out to your friends. It'll help me keep this going. And if you do that, your movie friends will thank you for it. Thank you. Until next time, I'm Mikola. DVD Extras. The film includes a chance encounter between Ed Wood and the man he aspired to emulate as a writer, director, actor, Orson Welles. 
Vincent D'Onofrio plays Wells, but his lines are dubbed, uncredited, by the best Orson Welles emulator in the business, Maurice LaMarche. LaMarche's version of Orson is also the voice of Pinky's co-conspirator, The Brain. How did Plan 9 come to be regarded as the worst film of all time? In 1978, the year that Ed Wood died, Harry Medved and Richard Dreyfuss publish a book. It's called The 50 Worst Films of All Time. Today that'd be a BuzzFeed article. Back then it was a book. Plan 9 wasn't even in it. Apparently, Medved and Dreyfus didn't even know about Plan 9. But devoted fans of the movie wrote in, and Medved screened the film, knew it was golden. Two years later, he published a second book, this time with his brother Michael. It's called The Golden Turkey Awards. And the turkey for worst film of all time goes to Plan 9 from Outer Space. The Medveds flogged their Golden Turkey Awards endlessly. They even toured college campuses, showing and deriding the Ed Wood films. That's how Plan 9 got famous. The Medved brothers probably made a lot more money mocking Ed Wood than Ed Wood made being Ed Wood. Some end screen goodies for you. That's the trailer for Tim Burton's Ed Wood. Here's Plan 9, the whole film on YouTube. It's right here. Now, if you're just joining me for Movies on Movies, this is a playlist for everything you've missed. And if you want to send your friends a short promotional video about this series, please do, please do send them to this one. Links for all these in the description. Bye now. Yes, click subscribe.